And after spending 15 years in one of the most successful rock bands in the world, Brandon Boyd of Incubus takes a giant leap into his solo career while releasing his third book, Brandon Boyd is ITM's Author of the Week. Welcome back to this festive episode of In the Mix. It's our Halloween show coming at you from Ripley's Believe It or Not in Times Square. I'm your host, Gina Jordan, AKA the Queen of the Damned. Now everybody here at In the Mix wanted to help you get into the Halloween spirit. We hope that you dress up and come on down to Ripley's Believe It or Not later today. They're open till 1 a.m. Now if you don't live in New York, you can log on to ripleys.com and go to one of the 34 locations Worldwide. Now next up, In the Mix recently took a little field trip to Barnes & Noble in Tribeca, where we attended a rare book signing session and met up with In the Mix's author of the week, Brandon Boyd. In the late 90s, singer-songwriter Brandon Boyd drove Incubus to the top of the charts with lyrics from hit songs like Drive and Pardon Me. Today, more than a decade later, Boyd is still going strong with a double release on his own label. A new solo LP, Sons of the Sea, and a book, So the Echo. Oh, baby, could we spend a month here tonight? Boyd is a creative force. He's been busy on the road, touring the country, connecting with fans. Boyd's latest stop was Barnes & Noble in Tribeca. I personally feel like I have to just make space create an environment that is conducive to creativity. ITM literally caught up with Boyd a few minutes before his Tribeca book signing. Here we are in the mix with Brandon Boyd, and thank you for having us today. We're here at Barnes & Noble, downtown in Tribeca. You've got 200 people outside waiting to talk to you, to ask you questions, to experience these uh, two wonderful pieces of art that came from your heart and soul. I'm stoked you guys are here. I love how you have your uh, your tag autographed. Yeah, they, oh, it's coming off. Dang, oh, I'm gonna put it right here. I don't wanna necessarily be like Starbucks boy when I go up there. Hundreds of die-hard fans were waiting outside his private room. No matter what, I knew like I had to be here and meet this man. Yeah, it was a no-brainer. Once I found out he was going to be in New York City, I had to. It was amazing, and I related to it big time. So where's your autograph? Show us, show, show it off. I have also been a fan since I was 12 years old, so that's like 12 years now. It was just a complete dream come true. ITM busted in on Boyd, who was practicing a rare pre-signing ritual called Sipping Pirate Bucks. Feel free to drink Starbucks. We're really... It's not Starbucks, actually. It's Pirate Bucks. That's one of his own creations. I'm drinking, I'm drinking booty. Another rare pre-signing ritual, doodling. Did you just draw that today? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a compulsive doodle bug. Sometimes the doodles just will go a little bit longer. It's no surprise the L.A. born and bred artist is a lifelong doodle bug. His latest book, So the Echo, is made up of artwork, experimental illustrations, personal photos, journal entries, the book is ultimately a very personal collection of boys' hybrid doodles. Were you a doodle bug as a kid? Did you used to yeah. sit there in class and doodle? I did all that stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know where it started exactly, but um, there were lots of opportunities for me to doodle when I was young. And so I took them, and my parents encouraged it as well. They would do things, and my mom played this game, and I actually still play it when I'm out to dinner with my friends, but we used to call it the scribble game. And you uh, just draw a scribble and then pass it to your right, and give them the pen or the pencil, and you gotta make a picture out of it. Because like as it turns out, it's actually a really healthy uh, right brain exercise. Mm. Let's develop the right hemisphere of your brain. I like that. I think you're. I think you're developed. Hence your your latest LP. <laughs> Pretty cool. A beautiful How cool cover. is that they're making CDs oversized now? <laughs> Isn't that neat? Seriously, it's like a huge CD. Yeah. Uh, Son of the Sea. Mm -hmm. which you decided to release at the same time you're releasing a book mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And tell me, the book, the LP at the same time, how did that happen? They kind of occurred in a roundabout way um, at the same time, which is why I wanted to make them available um, around the same time. This record I wrote um, with Brendan O'Brien, a longtime friend of mine. He produced the past three Incubus records. It was just sort of the coalescing of about six or eight months worth of us just getting in the studio and putting our heads together, and we had no real agenda behind it. We just wanted to see what would happen, mm -hmm. to work together in a different way. Um, and we were both thrilled with the way that it turned out, so we decided to like, actually like share it, you know? And it's always a, an interesting moment when you decide that something is like worth sharing. Because <laughs> you're proud of it. 
Yeah, a little bit. I think we were stoked on the way that it turned out, and we had a really good time doing it. So the book literally is, in addition to some other artwork books that you have done, yeah. what inspired So the Echo? I had a moment to compile like five years worth of uh, travel journals, photography, paintings. Doodles. Doodles. <laughs> watercolor and ink, all kinds of stuff. And so I, I just, while I was making this record, I just was, if I wasn't in the mood to actively work on a song, I would sort of shift into the other gear. Like that's sort of been, always been my goal, is to create an atmosphere um, that was conducive to, to Muse showing up. Why your own label this time around and the book as well? You published the book as well. Yes, yes. I've always published my own books, um, but uh, I, I just finished out a 17-year record contract with Epic Records, with Incubus. So uh, it was an opportunity to take a break from the traditional sort of record industry and um, try something new. So I just put it out under Avow Records and we'll see what happens. So doing your own thing, how does that feel creating something that you don't have the studio there every step of the way or any mm -hmm. step of the way? Right. It's been uh, expensive and scary, but really fun and very revelatory. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry has changed almost completely since I first started making albums and putting out albums. But um, I'm excited by the ways that it's changing. BrandonBoy.me, make sure you go and check out his album, his book. Thanks so much for letting us come by to uh, your book signing today. So you're going to go and autograph a bunch of books, right? Yeah. So guys, if you can see, we're standing here with Brandon Boyd in Barnes & Noble, which is so exciting. He's got hundreds of fans around. If you guys log on to InTheMixShow.com, you'll have a chance to play some In The Mix trivia and win this autographed CD and poster from Brandon. Log on to InTheMixShow.com to participate and potentially win some of these exclusive autographed Brandon Boyd items. InTheMixShow.com to participate.